Welcome to Britwatch Banter with Ros Satar, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by, um, would you believe, one of my oldest school friends. We've known each other since <coughs> years. I'm sorry, that was a tickle in my throat. I'd like to introduce Sarah Bennett. She's the PGA captain-elect. She's a PGA specialised coach. She's been a pro for 32 years, played on the Ladies' European Tour. She's the vice chair of the WPGA, the WPAJ, WPGA captain, full-time coach with a wide range of players from little itty-bitty people all the way up from grassroots to representative level and the paid ranks. And guess what? I've got my own personal golf pro. Yay! Sarah, hi. <laughs> wow, here we go. <laughs> now Connected through golf. How cool I know. Is that? And, and here's, here's the thing. So for people, people who follow me via Britwatch Sports, you can't, um, you can't have escaped my sudden rediscovering of golf during lockdown. And um, talk about small world. Sarah and I reconnected through a Facebook group that the, that the person who sold me my clubs in lockdown put me onto. Um, and since then, we've had a we've had a ball catching up. But the reason that we're together is to look at if you if you want to get into golf, you know. Don't think that there are any barriers at all, because let me assure you, there are not, especially given me playing like a donkey. Sarah has yet to see me play like a donkey, so <laughs> this could be the last time that we talk together. But on We've got plenty of time to see that, I tell you, I want to get you out on that golf course, no but, excuses now. But to, talking about lockdown golf, I mean, t talk to me about what it was, what, you know, as, as a coach that's, that, you know, pre-pandemic, what have you noticed? Um, well, participation has absolutely you know, doubled, tripled from where from where we were. And I'm seeing sort of the demographic has changed massively. Um, I mean, I coach, people think, yeah, female coach, I only coach ladies and girls. Not not at all. I mean, I have a really good uh, client base, as you, as you touched on, from young players, all walks of life. People have different reasons to play the game. Um, so I think for me, I saw a lot of men that were... Um, you know, having a, um, eight o'clock lessons. So, of course, I was there setting the alarm at half past five in the morning. So <laughs> that, you know, it was a perfect start for them for the for the day. And I think it really gave them that really good feel factor to start their, their you know, their, their, their daily routine. Um, so lots of lots of men that were starting the game. Is that because they were working at home all Pretty of a sudden? Pretty much, yeah, right. all working from home. So had a little bit more time. You know, unfortunately, you know, golf has had a sort of, history of people saying, well, I don't have time to play the game, which is really um, something that is um, really being looked at, both as a professional, um, both a lot of the governing bodies are, are really have looked at that massively and, and changed the way, the structure of the game. Um, so now it is massively uh, inclusive and we, we can have different variations of the game, so it gets everybody there. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. You know, my my friend um again friends of Britwatch will know uh, Anna Smith, former Fed Cup uh, GB player. She was the one that dragged me down to World of Golf, uh, and we joked about it, sort of saying, "Oh God, well we'll go to World of Golf rather than Top Golf because you know Top Golf is a, a little bit maybe too um too sort of play." But again, if it's if it's something that gets people in and mm -hmm. enjoyable, does it really matter? Oh no, not at all. I mean, you know, you know, as soon as I meet a client or a group, I, I, you know, communicate with them and really get feedback straight away is what 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 they're looking for out of the game. More importantly, why they're playing the game. Um, and you know, people said, well, you know, all I've played is 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 pitch and putt or crazy golf. That's great. Or if they've played on the Wii. I mean, all those things are, are huge. You know, I'd never absolutely not not starting game playing golf from that if they're interested then i'm interested see now i'm annoyed because i don't remember recall seeing golf on my Wii. yeah it was apparently i mean I've, I've, you know, got, I've got tennis and boxing i don't have time to do that <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's interesting you say about crazy golf because if i if i think mm. back to my old man when he played when he got into it we got into it playing mini golf or crazy golf on holiday and then somehow i, I don't know i don't know where he got them from i, I just i just learned not to ask he he, he he got two putters and he made two holes at mm, either end of mm, our garden mm. and we just putt back and forth I, th I actually credit him with how good my short game is the rest of it maybe not so much but um you're gonna leave but, that for me to sort <laughs> aren't you? yeah afraid so yeah. um but but you know 
I used to hack around with my dad, and then when when I when I started to play more seriously, so I started with his his old sort of steel clubs, mm-hmm. then his old mm-hmm. grab bites, um, and then eventually he bought me a lady set. Now when I went back to it and pitched up at my world of golf with my old set that were probably now somewhere around fifteen years old. I was astounded at how much the technology had moved on. But we were talking earlier when I arrived at yours. I was was all excited because I've managed to finally sign up for my clubs, uh, three clubs and a putter. And we were were having a discussion about which clubs I should take. But if I look at what I play with, you know, um, aside from my friends always like used used to tease me because they used to just call me 100 yards satire. It didn't actually matter what club I played with. It just Mm. goes 100 yards down the fairway. Um, I think I'm a little better. (laughs) a little bit better now but um but yeah you know if I look at how I play I play with my driver my three wood and then some measure of some club to get up to the green and then the putter Mm, mm. um if you're looking at starting from scratch you know and you've gone beyond playing at or hitting a, a, a at a driving range what's the next step well you know I as I said I've been a pro for 32 years I've been coaching full time now for 12 um out of that that time I set up Golfing Girl, um, which was the first of its kind all those years ago. Um, I really set that up for because I wanted um, ladies that I coach to feel uh, comfortable in that environment. In that environment, so that's how I why I set that up. And so basically, everybody is open to to attend whether they've got any experience or not. I have group sessions on a regular basis. But more important than that, I always set aside time to to have coffee afterwards, just to chat and chill. Because golf golf is more than more than more than the te- technique and the technology. It's about the communication and just having fun with each other. And that's that that's what golfing girls all about. And it's still going strong now. I have expanded that to 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 UK trips, UK holidays. You know, I even did a long haul to Mauritius. Really? Yep, yep. I'm not sure that would be good for me, because if you're related to half the island, that's not quite as well, much Well, we had to be rescued think. from the pedalo, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> as we were drifting out to the reef, we were rescu- rescued. Yeah, you know enough. there's sharks on the other side of those reefs, right? Well, we were pretty close to it. So <laughs> <laughs> we want one pedalo, we were re-rescued, so that, that was... I mean, I can laugh about it now, but actually we probably think about it. It was a little bit serious at the time, but... But, yeah, so, I mean, it, it is... It is less barriers you know we can play nine holes it's just very accessible compared to when I was young I mean you know I remember, yeah what back when we were kids well I tell you what the only reason this will make you laugh how I used to get a game I used to stand behind my parents tree at the end of the golf course they lived on the golf course and I used to wait for any uh, single players going off at first I used to run back as quick as I can golf clubs on the back and I used to jump out and say excuse me can I play golf with you Really, that's, that's how I used to. That's how I used to play golf back then. Wow, I had no one to play with because there was no girls yeah. within and my. Yeah, area. I mean that's. The thing. I mean we're to, <laughs> we are obviously very youthful, um, as you can hear by our voices. But I mean, you know, we're, you're, we're talking back in the eighties, mid eighties. Oh yeah, but I tell you, back then I had to unwrap my golf ball. I was wrapped up in little red sweetie wrappers. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. I wish I'd kept them. They were just like little penny sweet shops. They were wrapped up with a little sticker on the top. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, commandos and hot dogs. And you won't remember, they were 1.62 inch golf balls. Wow. Yeah, tiny golf balls. Yeah, they stopped those in the 90s because they went too far. Really? Yeah, that's when when we played with a bigger golf ball, 1.68 golf ball. Right. Yeah, so... I mean, the the one thing that I've found, and I mean, I'm lucky because I I joined um, a local club. I mean, I found when I was like looking for clubs that there were lots of clubs that had um, good flexible points because they wanted to make it much more accessible. Yeah. Uh, and I've still since taken the leap and actually joined at Hampton Court Palace mm-hmm. because um, the ladies section is is very good, and I'm very lucky that it's it's a very uh, welcoming and inclusive um, ladies section and made some very good friends there. Um, but I. Where I started um, playing with World of Golf, one of the instructors used to set up, um, and he still does them now, actually, Texas Scrambles, which were great to get people going. But even then, within those groups, there's there's women that, that feel a little bit um, nervous because, obviously, the guys are quite you know, chess-beaty competitive, and they just feel a little bit kind of, you know, it, it, it's scary. And the, the one question that I get asked a lot is, is it scary, was it scary to join the club? 
And the honest answer is, you know, I, I played my first card round with the current captain mm. and a former captain, and I was having a chat with them. And the and the the one, the, old, the former captain said, "Somebody told you that you were playing with me and um and the actual current club captain." She said, "And I just watched your face crumble and you choke for the first few holes." Um, but we're about what that happens to everybody. So oh yeah, I mean stepping on that first tee. I remember when I played in the first um, Women's Open, British Open. I tell you, when your name's called out and you look down that fairway, it's the first open you played in, you think, my goodness, I hope I don't hit that person on the right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you put the tea peg in the ground and you feel like you're going to fall on your on your nose. I mean, you're that nervous. <laughs> really? But, oh, yes. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. But the more you do it, it gives you a real buzz as a pro. You know, that that's what you, that's what you, you practice for and that's what you... Yeah, you're up there for. And I loved that. I wouldn't have changed it for anything. So. I mean... I joked earlier about how the fact that my mates teased me and called me 100 yards satire and mm, basically mm. told me that I'd wasted £600 on a second hand set of clubs because all I needed was a 7 iron. Um, but, you know, when you think about it, I mean, we, we joked during the lockdown when, when they when they kiboshed golf mm. and we were saying that's ridiculous because actually it's probably one of the most socially distant sports you could get. Because mm. if I think about it, me, Phil and Anna start on the tee, end up on the green, but for the rest of it... We're scattered to the winds chasing golf balls, but yeah. I mean, in in terms of um, in in ter there's so much to master. My dad always used to tell me you go through the entire microcosm of emotions in eighteen holes. Um, if you were starting out, what's what? Give me three. Well, I'm not starting out obviously, but give me three tips to remember when I hit the course on Thursday. Okay, so three tips for you, or is it three tips? New golfer? Well, three tips for me, and then we'll then we'll look at the new golfers. Help me first. Then we'll right. Well, them. as I said, I haven't I haven't seen you swing. I haven't Which coached you. So <laughs> basically, I would say um, set out. Don't set out there with a number in your head. A lot of people are transfixed with. Oh my goodness, I've got to got to play to my handicap. Everybody's a little bit too handicap orientated, in my opinion. I think there is a time for that, but I think there's also the time for for focusing on just one one specific goal. So you might have been working with whoever you've been working with, maybe to hit more fairways. So your one goal would just be to, to to hit more fairways, and that's all you're focusing. So you're not not focusing on technicalities out there. You can't play your best golf when you're thinking of a, a jigsaw puzzle swing. Which is, I mean, I coach ball flight as a coach, so I will not give anybody a a dot to dot swing. So, um, so number one, just choose your target. Make sure that on your on your home course you've got specific targets in mind, and just focus on that. All right. So zero technicalities. Go with one goal in mind. Yeah. Yeah. And in between shots, just have a chat, have a banter. Don't cut, don't put too much pressure on yourself. People put so much pressure on themselves to perform. And I, I used to enjoy the challenge. If I hit a bad shot, I okay, don't get me wrong, I like to hit a bad shot, but we know we are gonna hit more bad shots than we are good, just to put you in perspective. Wait, what? Seriously, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But it's the great golfers that deal with those bad shots and minimize minimize the the, the sort of you know destruction devastation to a, to a scorecard if we want to you know yeah no well that's, that's i mean for me just hearing what you're saying there's one hole at hampton that is when i get to it i think that's my nemesis mm. and it's and i i kick myself because it's obviously in my head when i get to the start of this this hole this is going to be this is going to be my double figure hole okay and it's in the start of my head and then sure enough i'll hit eight or nine and I'll be like, yeah, typical, that hole. Okay, so what I would say for that, if it's a particular tee shot that you have to struggle with, or, I mean, obviously, you know, eight or nine shots, there's going to be a few shots in there that you're struggling with. But I would also, whatever strategy, I would change your strategy. <laughs> so, in other words, if you, you know, if you, if, you, if you have problems hitting the fairway with your driver, and that could be uh, you don't see the shot shape. So, put the driver away. Hit something like a hybrid, hit down the centre. Then you completely change perspective and the outlook. Plus, if you hit that fairway, you can approach the next shot with a much more positive mental attitude. So it's really important not to keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Because absolutely, that, that those negative thoughts are just going to 
keep snowballing, snowballing, and then you don't, you know, you're going to keep doing the same thing. So this this particular, I mean, hopefully I'll get you up to up to Hampton and you'll mm. see. But this particular hole, I think the reason why it futzes with my mind so much is it's very very open. Mm. Every everywhere else has got deer bouncing through the glen which in, in itself is a challenge because they'll hoof your ball backwards. They'll never mm. hoof it forwards, I've noticed. No, um, you've got, kick, you've got Yeah, you've got crows that nick the coloured balls. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, for, and the one thing that I know that I do, and a, actually a very wise um, lady that I played with the other day, if she's hit a couple of bad shots with her club, she'll go down a club. Mm. And, she, and w whereas I'm like, I will hit you, three wood, you will go straight for me. Well, so, you know, I played on, I don't remember which year it was, but, you know, I was, I was swinging well, but I could not find the percentage of fairways I needed to with my driver. And obviously, you know, if you've got early morning tea times and, and you know, it's dewy or, or wet, then, you know, you have to hit the fairway. So I literally went through about, about five or six months of hitting three wood off the tee. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I, hit ev I would hit every single fairway and I probably only lost maybe not even 10 yards, but I was on the fairway. So, yeah. So for me, that that that's playing smart golf. Come on, smart golf. <laughs> Sarah, you've known me since we were like thirteen years yeah, old. Yeah, I know. When have you ever known me to be smart? <laughs> okay, sensible, smart, and sensible. Yeah, enthusiastic. Yes. Smart, sensible. So, so there you go. <laughs> oh, if if we have this if we have this call at the end of the year and I've got my handicap down, I will I will bake you a cake. Triple S. There you go. That's gonna be your. That's gonna be your. I've just. I've, you heard it here. That's your. Heard that's your new nickname. Name, triple S. Okay, so that that's me helped, but um, for for Pete, I mean, the, the things that I found really interesting when I came back. Number one was the technology of the clubs, mm -hmm. but luckily I had a fantastic friend who um was made the captain of her club, and her husband, God love him, bought her a set of brand new mm -hmm. pins. So she sold me a really good set, and I was quite lucky. I, I popped to my local American Golf with the pictures and, and showed them, and they said basically if we were going to send you sell you a set of clubs. As an intermediate, that's what we've mm, sold you. So mm. if she's selling it for half price, grab it. But I'm I'm new now. I've gone. I've had a few lessons. I put world of golf. I'm going. To, I'm going to start. I've been told to get three clubs and a putter. Let's say. Yeah, yeah. Um, what would you advise someone coming at it brand new to 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 look for? Okay, so I think first of all that, uh, as you said, that the most important thing is don't get the hand-me-downs from the husband or because you know no disrespect to that but they'd be too heavy for you yeah straight away you know that's going to in in inhibit club head speed it's going to be diff difficult to get the ball airborne if you haven't got club head speed also depending if they're too heavy if you've got injuries you've got to be very very careful with golf in terms of equipment you've got to make sure you have the right equipment um i mean i do a lot of with with, with grip sizes if people have had hand surgery there's lots of different styles of grips. So I would say, I would sooner rather you start with maybe three clubs, as you said, in a putter. There's not a lot of sets you can get half set, half sets, but, and I actually like that because I'm quite a creative coach. I think, you know, when I see young players, I don't necessarily want them to have the best 14 clubs in the bag. I'd sooner rather them start with, you know, three or four to start with than be really creative. I think a lot of creativity has been lost nowadays with technology. I think technology is great, but when I think about, you know, okay, back when I played, you know, we didn't have a, a sand wedge. So how do I get how do they get the ball high? Well, I used to manipulate the, the pitching wedge. I mean, I used to get, I probably only had, I started with two clubs and a putter. Every wow. birthday I got one, and then Christmas. So I added it up to that set. But I became so creative as a golfer, I could hit... Half shots, high shots, low shots. But I didn't really know how I did it. My goodness, yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell you how I did it back then. I just did it because I had a feel for the game. Yeah. And I think that's very important, especially when I was coaching the England players. You know, just having that creativity, that vision, you, you learn that. So a lot of on-course games, um, you know, maybe one of them I say, right, first we'll go out with the odd clubs. Today you're going to go out with the evens. Lots of different well, oh, that's of, really that, that, that it's makes, a great thing to yeah, do. Yeah, because I remember with my with the set that my that my dad actually bought me in the end. Once I once I like 
shown that I was going to take it a bit more seriously. It was a proper fitted set of ladies' graphite. Mm, mm. But by God, me and the uh, e, me and the even irons. So this is <laughs> this is even predating hybrids now. Me and the even irons just did not get on at all, mm. at all. I actually would pick up my eight iron and say to it, "You're a seven iron," and then hit. Because if I picked it up and said you're an eight iron, it would just go any, anywhere but where I wanted it to go. That's really funny you say that. I was teaching a couple of weeks ago and um, this client said, oh, I just cannot hit my pitching wedge, but I hit my nine. So she started off with the nine iron, hitting it really nicely. And um, I said, well, let me just give it a clean. It's a bit of mud there. So I got the mud and I quickly switched it. You switched I it? I switched it. She didn't know. Then she carried on hitting this club, which she thought was her nine iron. <laughs> And then I said, that's a really good shot. She said, well, I really like this nine on. I said, have okay, a look. have a look at the bottom of the club. She said, it's a pitching wedge. I've never seen anybody laugh so much in all my life. So now, a bit of a psych psychology yeah. thing. I was a bit, bit sneaky there, but hey-ho, you know, I got a good result from her. And she was, you know, went away a very happy customer and full of confidence. So there's certain ways that you can do things. <laughs> <laughs> Right, make some mental notes. Sarah's <laughs> going to be sneaky when we I'm going to be changing play. your clubs thinking, that's right. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie, though. There's a little mm. bit of trepidation knowing that, um, you know, at some stage when we head out of course, I'm, go I'm going to have a professional eye on me. I'm not, I'm not going to lie with you. I'm actually going to feel a bit nervous I when think... we play. I'm going to feel like I played the two captains, to be honest, because... Oh. I will be by then. Yeah, <laughs> this is also very. This is also very true. But yeah, You've got you know, to give Captain Courtesy shot now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, you know, for, for me, because I used to be uh, an athlete, I've got dead knees. Um, you know, tennis is too difficult to play, so I stick mm. to writing about it, as obviously people know. Um, and so golf for me has actually become another form of. I, mean, I treat it as another form of my knee rehab. Mm -hmm. How many people do you see? And we, we, you know, one, one of the reasons I'm actually down here with Sarah today is not just to bring you Brick Watch Banter, but also that she's um, re gripped my clubs. So they've been re gripped with thicker grips, and I use arthritic gloves to help my hands. In terms of people that are at our, <laughs> our time of life that are finding it a little bit difficult with things creaking that never used to be. What difference does golf make in in terms of in terms of like health and stuff, and and also from well, I say mental health. I probably go through mm. true anxiety on the course, but that's yeah. another story. Yeah, but I think I think it's a couple of things there. You know, we all know we've we've played. You know, we had a really a day that we didn't we wish to uh, remember. So we've come to about seventeen or eighteen par. We've hit two cracking shots, finished off with a putt, and we've actually forgotten all the all the other previous shots that we've hit for the last three and a half hours of their history um so i think there's that side of things as well um and i think also i mean i've coached um i don't know if you know but i set up a program for the injured service personnel and um you know my goodness you know i have to i have to find a way to get any client in front of me to get better for whatever um method I use you know so it, it it's great which is why I love coaching because you know every client is different they can have the same they can have the same fault but I I, I have numerous ways to improve the ball flight so I think with you know people with limitations you know there are various things you can do you can change setup positions you can get them to stand more to the left of the target so it's called open the stance just to allow the body to swim you can change the grip um, their actual hand position on the golf club so many different things you can change you know so and you've got to you've got to coach you've got to coach the person in front of you the body shape and their limitations as long as that client leaves my lesson tea feeling happy then i know I've, mm. job's done job's done <laughs> <laughs> well well that'd be a challenge for, for you then um but in terms of um in terms of w where we're at i mean you posted something i'm not sure whether it was on your page or golfing girl but it was, I, I was just in stitches because it was in the midst of well hurricane etty or whatever whatever the storm is <laughs> the storm name is this week um and, i mean sarah you're a you're a tall person but i was watching you being blown backwards so for me you know i put in my cards 
started out maybe a couple of points higher than I thought I would be. And then I discovered the, the heartache that is the new system where you've got to put in 20 cards and suddenly you see your handicap creep up every time. So what started out as a relatively respectable-ish 38, maybe two points higher than I wanted to be, I wanted to be at least 36, then started creeping up. Now, my handicap secretary is lovely. Mm. And she was like, "Just keep, you, you've got to just keep putting your cards in. But now we're at winter and, I mean, Hampton's got good drainage, but, mm. you know... My God, that thing plugs in there. Um, for, for, for golf in, in these conditions, are we really? Are we just treating it as practice golf? Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've you know hooked up with a a chap that I used to play golf with when I was fourteen, believe it or not. I can't even and, remember that um, far back. Sarah. God, we were, I tell you, we were we were, mega... we were in the prefab yeah, at St Mary's at we fourteen. Were. He, I mean, he's mega competitive, and we've just rekindled that, and we go out for nine holes. Every Sunday, and we have a match. But you know, the thing for me is, I would always say, little and often, I would not be trudging around there uh, with a scorecard in my hand. Absolutely not. What I'd be doing is is utilising the time effectively. So I'd go to the the practice ground. I would work on my wedge game, distance control, because I love it in these conditions because that's the strength of my game, and it's like playing darts. It's like playing darts. It's fantastic. If you've got a good short game, good wedge game from 100 in, that ball, you know your distance and your carry, fantastic. Happy mm. days because, you know, that that's where we're going to score yeah. in these conditions. So I, I would say nine holes, work on your wedge game, and then obviously a few drivers and your full swing at the range. But, again, that's another, another subject, you know. I don't want any hitting balls aimlessly out there to driving range off a mat. That's asking for injuries, especially yeah. if you're not used to it. I mean, I was so. gonna, I was gonna just because I, I started out with the pro at Hampton, and I, you know, the the local driving range to me um, has hour long slots. So I stupidly decided this is when I realised that the arthritis in my hands had gotten so bad. Mm. I decided to book a two hour slot, went through my bag, and, I, and to be fair, I had like alignment sticks, and I looked up various drills. I had three drills in mind. And I stuck to them, but after two hours, so I started with my sand wedge and worked my way up through the bag. But by the time I got to my, my woods and my drivers, and I still don't know what to do with my hybrids, but by the time I got to my woods and my drivers, you wouldn't think that I'd never held a golf stick two in my hours. hand. Two hours, oh my, my goodness. Yeah, it was that awful. Is a, that's way too many. I, yeah. say, I say to my clients, like, 25 balls, make every ball count. Make every ball count. Oh, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I now I've now split I've the bag. The drills and t different specifics to work on, so they they really feel like they're they're sort of managing their practice to take that that practice work to the course. Because there's no point in going to the driving range just hitting ball after ball after ball if you can't recreate it. And there's very few players that can recreate it because very few players, unfortunately, don't really practice as effectively as they could. Yeah. So it's key. I mean, I've written a lot about that, and it's I'm very hot on that. It's a very important aspect of the game. Well, hopefully we can um, now that we have rekindled, we can we can sort of have a little bit of a series. But you know, just as you're saying, you've written uh, a lot about that. Just tell people who are listening where they can find your hints and tips. Yeah. Well, I've got um, you know, I'm I am going to start a YouTube channel, but I have my journal, which is based on SarahBennettGolf.co.uk, which is my main website. Um, so scroll down there, and there's lots of little articles that I've written. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy those and let me know. Brilliant. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing uh, another one of this, maybe when we get to the springtime, if you can spare the time, because obviously that's when you're going to be uh, the, you, you won't be the PGA captain <laughs> elect anymore. You will actually be, what are you looking forward to doing the most from the role? What am I looking forward to the most? I must admit, I think the thing for me is uh, meeting my fellow, my fellow PGA members and really trying to grow the PGA, grow the WPGA's game, which also will then feed back into the amateur, the amateur circuit at club level. So I think it's really an integral part. It's a massive job. And I think, you know, if I can get club golfers to, to see that this is possible, then I think hopefully that will um, encourage, encourage a sport that we love. Brilliant. 
love sometimes of add. Yeah, occasionally. <laughs> Sarah, thanks so much for, for agreeing to talk to me and I look forward to um, doing a few more of these. No problem. See you soon. Thanks, Ros. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to Britwatch Banter.